A submarine or simply sub is a watercraft capable of independent operation underwater. It differs from a submersible, which has more limited underwater capability. The term most commonly refers to a large, crewed vessel. It is also sometimes used historically or colloquially to refer to remotely operated vehicles and robots, as well as medium-sized or smaller vessels, such as the midget submarine and the wet sub. The noun submarine evolved as a shortened form of submarine boat. By naval tradition, submarines are usually referred to as boats rather than as ships. Regardless of their size, boat is usually reserved for seagoing vessels of relatively small size. Although experimental submarines had been built before, submarine design took off during the 19th century, and they were adopted by several navies. Submarines were first widely used during World War I and now figure in many navies large and small. Military uses include attacking enemy surface ships merchant and military, attacking other submarines, aircraft carrier protection, blockade running, ballistic missile submarines as part of a nuclear strike force, reconnaissance, conventional land attack for example using a cruise missile, and covert insertion of special forces. Civilian uses for submarines include marine science, salvage, exploration and facility inspection and maintenance. Submarines can also be modified to perform more specialized functions such as search and rescue missions or undersea cable repair. Submarines are also used in tourism, and for undersea archaeology. Most large submarines consist of a cylindrical body with hemispherical or conical ends and a vertical structure, usually located amidships, which houses communications and sensing devices as well as periscopes. In modern submarines, this structure is the sail in American usage and fin in European usage. A conning tower was a feature of earlier designs, a separate pressure hull above the main body of the boat that allowed the use of shorter periscopes. There is a propeller or pump jet at the rear, and various hydrodynamic control fins. Smaller, deep diving and specialty submarines may deviate significantly from this traditional layout. Submarines use diving planes and also change the amount of water and air in ballast tanks to change buoyancy for submerging and surfacing. Submarines have one of the widest ranges of types and capabilities of any vessel. They range from small autonomous examples and one or two person vessels that operate for a few hours, to vessels that can remain submerged for six months. Such as the Russian Typhoon class, the biggest submarines ever built. Submarines can work at greater depths than are survivable or practical for human divers. Modern deep diving submarines derive from the bathyscaphe, which in turn evolved from the diving bell. History <laughs> Early submersibles According to a report in Opusculum Tysneri published in 1562, two Greeks submerged and surfaced in the river Tagus near the city of Toledo several times in the presence of the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, without getting wet and with the flame they carried in their hands still alight. In 1578, the English mathematician William Bourne recorded in his book Inventions or devises one of the first plans for an underwater navigation vehicle. A few years later the Scottish mathematician and theologian John Napier wrote in his Secret Inventions 1596, the following, "...these inventions besides devises of sailing under water with divers, other devises and stratagems for harming of the enemies by the grace of God and work of expert craftsmen I hope to perform." It's unclear whether he ever carried out his idea. The first submersible of whose construction there exists reliable information was designed and built in 1620 by Cornelis Drebbel, a Dutchman in the service of James I of England. It was propelled by means of oars. Topic: 18th century. By the mid-18th century, over a dozen patents for submarines, submersible boats had been granted in England. In 1747, Nathaniel Simons patented and built the first known working example of the use of a ballast tank for submersion. His design used leather bags that could fill with water to submerge the craft. A mechanism was used to twist the water out of the bags and cause the boat to resurface. 
In 1749, the Gentleman's Magazine reported that a similar design had initially been proposed by Giovanni Borelli in 1680. By this point of development, further improvement in design necessarily stagnated for over a century, until new industrial technologies for propulsion and stability could be applied. The first military submarine was the Turtle, 1775, a hand powered acorn shaped device designed by the American David Bushnell to accommodate a single person. It was the first verified submarine capable of independent underwater operation and movement, and the first to use screws for propulsion. Topic: 19th century. In 1800, France built a human-powered submarine designed by American Robert Fulton, the Nautilus. The French eventually gave up on the experiment in 1804, as did the British when they later considered Fulton's submarine design. In 1864, late in the American Civil War, the Confederate Navy's H. L. Hunley became the first military submarine to sink an enemy vessel, the Union sloop of war USS Housatonic. In the aftermath of its successful attack against the ship, the Hunley also sank, possibly because it was too close to its own exploding torpedo. In 1866, the submarine Explorer was the first submarine to successfully dive, cruise underwater, and resurface under the control of the crew. The design by German-American Julius H. Kroll, in German, Kroll incorporated elements that are still used in modern submarines. In 1866, the Flach was built at the request of the Chilean government, by Karl Flach, a German engineer and immigrant. It was the fifth submarine built in the world and, along with a second submarine, was intended to defend the port of Valparaiso against attack by the Spanish Navy during the Chincha Islands War. 20th <laughs> Mechanical power The first submarine not relying on human power for propulsion was the French Plongor diver, launched in 1863, which used compressed air at 180 psi 1241 kilopascals. Narcisse Montreal designed the first air-independent and combustion-powered submarine, Ictinio II, which was launched in Barcelona, Spain in 1864. The submarine became a potentially viable weapon with the development of the Whitehead torpedo, designed in 1866 by British engineer Robert Whitehead, the first practical self-propelled or locomotive torpedo. The spar torpedo that had been developed earlier by the Confederate Navy was considered to be impracticable, as it was believed to have sunk both its intended target, and probably H. L. Hunley, the submarine that deployed it. Discussions between the English clergyman and inventor George Garrett and the Swedish industrialist Thorsten Nordenfeldt led to the first practical steam-powered submarines, armed with torpedoes and ready for military use. The first was Nordenfeldt I, a 56-ton, 19.5 metres 64 feet vessel similar to Garrett's ill-fated Resurgum 1879, with a range of 240 kilometres 130 nmi, 150 miles, armed with a single torpedo, in 1885. A reliable means of propulsion for the submerged vessel was only made possible in the 1880s with the advent of the necessary electric battery technology. The first electrically powered boats were built by Isaac Perel y Caballero in Spain, Depay de Lomé and Gustave Zede in France, and James Franklin Waddington in England. Perel's design featured torpedoes and other systems that later became standard in submarines. topic 20th century submarines were not put into service for any widespread or routine use by navies until the early 1900s this era marked a pivotal time in submarine development and several important technologies appeared a number of nations built and used submarines diesel electric propulsion became the dominant power system and equipment such as the periscope became standardized Countries conducted many experiments on effective tactics and weapons for submarines, which led to their large impact in World War I. The Irish inventor John Philip Holland built a model submarine in 1876 and a full-scale version in 1878, which were followed by a number of unsuccessful ones. In 1896 he designed the Holland Type 6 submarine, which used internal combustion engine power on the surface and electric battery power underwater. 
Launched on 17 May 1897 at Navy Lieutenant Lewis Nixon's Crescent Shipyard in Elizabeth, New Jersey, Holland V was purchased by the United States Navy on the 11th of April 1900, becoming the Navy's first commissioned submarine, christened USS Holland. Commissioned in June 1900, the French steam and electric Narval employed the now typical double hull design, with a pressure hull inside the outer shell. These 200-ton ships had a range of over 100 miles 161 kilometers underwater. The French submarine Agret in 1904 further improved the concept by using a diesel rather than a gasoline engine for surface power. Large numbers of these submarines were built, with 76 completed before 1914. The Royal Navy commissioned five Holland-class submarines from Vickers, Barrow in Furness, under license from the Holland Torpedo Boat Company from 1901 to 1903. Construction of the boats took longer than anticipated, with the first only ready for a diving trial at sea on 6 April 1902. Although the design had been purchased entirely from the U.S. company, the actual design used was an untested improvement to the original Holland design using a new 180 horsepower 130 kilowatts petrol engine. These types of submarines were first used during the Russo-Japanese War of 1904-05. Due to the blockade at Port Arthur, the Russians sent their submarines to Vladivostok, where by 1 January 1905 there were seven boats, enough to create the world's first operational submarine fleet the new submarine fleet began patrols on the 14th of february usually lasting for about 24 hours each the first confrontation with japanese warships occurred on the 29th of april 1905 when the russian submarine som was fired upon by japanese torpedo boats but then withdrew topic <laughs> world war 1 Military submarines first made a significant impact in World War I forces such as the U-boats of Germany saw action in the First Battle of the Atlantic, and were responsible for sinking RMS Lusitania, which was sunk as a result of unrestricted submarine warfare and is often cited among the reasons for the entry of the United States into the war. At the outbreak of war Germany had only 20 submarines immediately available for combat, although these included vessels of the diesel-engined U-19 class with the range 5,000 miles and speed 8 knots 15 kilometers per hour 9.2 miles per hour to operate effectively around the entire British coast by contrast the royal navy had a total of 74 submarines though of mixed effectiveness in August 1914, a flotilla of 10 U-boats sailed from their base in Heligoland to attack Royal Navy warships in the North Sea in the first submarine war patrol in history. The U-boats' ability to function as practical war machines relied on new tactics, their numbers, and submarine technologies such as combination diesel-electric power system developed in the preceding years. More submersibles than true submarines, U-boats operated primarily on the surface using regular engines, submerging occasionally to attack under battery power. They were roughly triangular in cross-section, with a distinct keel to control rolling while surfaced, and a distinct bow. During World War I more than 5,000 Allied ships were sunk by U-boats, this British tried to catch up to the Germans in terms of submarine technology with the creation of the K-class submarines. However, these were extremely large and often collided with each other forcing the British to scrap the K-class design shortly after the war. <inaudible> <inaudible> World War II During World War II, Germany used submarines to devastating effect in the Battle of the Atlantic, where it attempted to cut Britain's supply routes by sinking more merchant ships than Britain could replace. Shipping was vital to supply Britain's population with food, industry with raw material, and armed forces with fuel and armaments. While U boats destroyed a significant number of ships, the strategy ultimately failed. Although the U-boats had been updated in the interwar years, the major innovation was improved communications, encrypted using the famous Enigma cipher machine. This allowed for mass attack naval tactics Rudel tactic, commonly known as Wolfpack, but was also ultimately the U-boat's downfall. By the end of the war, almost 3,000 Allied ships 175 warships, 2,825 merchantmen had been sunk by U-boats. Although successful early in the war, ultimately the U-boat fleet suffered a casualty rate of 73%, almost all fatalities. 
Germany's U-boat fleet in World War II suffered heavy casualties, losing 793 U-boats and about 28,000 submariners out of 41,000, a casualty rate of about 70%. The Imperial Japanese Navy operated the most varied fleet of submarines of any navy, including Caton crewed torpedoes, midget submarines, Type A Ko Hayateki and Karyu classes, medium-range submarines, purpose-built supply submarines, and long-range fleet submarines. They also had submarines with the highest submerged speeds during World War II class submarines and submarines that could carry multiple aircraft I class submarines. They were also equipped with one of the most advanced torpedoes of the conflict, the oxygen-propelled Type 95. Nevertheless, despite their technical prowess, Japan chose to use its submarines for fleet warfare, and consequently were relatively unsuccessful, as warships were fast, maneuverable and well defended compared to merchant ships. The submarine force was the most effective anti-ship weapon in the American arsenal. Submarines, though only about 2% of the U.S. Navy, destroyed over 30% of the Japanese Navy, including eight aircraft carriers, one battleship and eleven cruisers. U.S. submarines also destroyed over 60% of the Japanese merchant fleet, crippling Japan's ability to supply its military forces and industrial war effort. Allied submarines in the Pacific War destroyed more Japanese shipping than all other weapons combined. This feat was considerably aided by the Imperial Japanese Navy's failure to provide adequate escort forces for the nation's merchant fleet. During World War II, 314 submarines served in the U.S. Navy, of which nearly 260 were deployed to the Pacific. When the Japanese attacked Hawaii in December 1941, 111 boats were in commission, 203 submarines from the Gato, Balao, and Tench classes were commissioned during the war. During the war, 52 U.S. submarines were lost to all causes, with 48 directly due to hostilities. U.S. submarines sank 1,560 enemy vessels, a total tonnage of 5.3 million tons 55% of the total sunk. The Royal Navy Submarine Service was used primarily in the classic Axis blockade. Its major operating areas were around Norway, in the Mediterranean against the Axis supply routes to North Africa, and in the Far East. In that war, British submarines sank 2 million tons of enemy shipping and 57 major warships, the latter including 35 submarines. Among these is the only documented instance of a submarine sinking another submarine while both were submerged. This occurred when HMS Venturer engaged U-864, the Venturer crew manually computed a successful firing solution against a three-dimensionally maneuvering target using techniques which became the basis of modern torpedo computer targeting systems. Seventy-four British submarines were lost, the majority, 42, in the Mediterranean. <laughs> Cold War military models. The first launch of a cruise missile SSMN-8 Regulus from a submarine occurred in July 1953, from the deck of USS Tunney, a World War II fleet boat modified to carry the missile with a nuclear warhead. Tunney and its sister boat, Barbero, were the United States' first nuclear deterrent patrol submarines. In the 1950s, nuclear power partially replaced diesel-electric propulsion. Equipment was also developed to extract oxygen from sea water. These two innovations gave submarines the ability to remain submerged for weeks or months. Most of the naval submarines built since that time in the U.S., the Soviet Union, Russian Federation, Britain, and France have been powered by nuclear reactors. In 1959–1960, the first ballistic missile submarines were put into service by both the United States George Washington class and the Soviet Union Gulf class as part of the Cold War nuclear deterrent strategy. During the Cold War, the U.S. and the Soviet Union maintained large submarine fleets that engaged in cat and mouse games. The Soviet Union lost at least four submarines during this period. K-129 was lost in 1968, a part of which the CIA retrieved from the ocean floor with the Howard Hughes-designed ship Glomar Explorer, K-8 in 1970, K-219 in 1986, and Komsomolays in 1989, which held a depth record among military submarines. 1,000 meters 3, feet. Many other Soviet subs, such as K-19 the first Soviet nuclear submarine, and the first Soviet sub to reach the North Pole were badly damaged by fire or radiation leaks. 
The U.S. lost two nuclear submarines during this time, USS Thresher due to equipment failure during a test dive while at its operational limit, and USS Scorpion due to unknown causes. During India's intervention in the Bangladesh Liberation War, the Pakistan Navy's hangar sank the Indian frigate INS Kukri. This was the first sinking by a submarine since World War II. During the same war, the Ghazi, a Tench-class submarine on loan to Pakistan from the U.S., was sunk by the Indian Navy. It was the first submarine combat loss since World War II. In 1982 during the Falklands War, the Argentine cruiser General Belgrano was sunk by the British submarine HMS Conqueror, the first sinking by a nuclear-powered submarine in war. Topic: 21st century. Topic: Usage. Topic: Military. Before and during World War II, the primary role of the submarine was anti-surface ship warfare. Submarines would attack either on the surface, using deck guns or submerged, using torpedoes. They were particularly effective in sinking Allied transatlantic shipping in both world wars, and in disrupting Japanese supply routes and naval operations in the Pacific in World War II. Mine-laying submarines were developed in the early part of the 20th century. The facility was used in both world wars. Submarines were also used for inserting and removing covert agents and military forces, for intelligence gathering, and to rescue aircrew during air attacks on islands, where the airmen would be told of safe places to crash land so the submarines could rescue them. Submarines could carry cargo through hostile waters or act as supply vessels for other submarines. Submarines could usually locate and attack other submarines only on the surface, although HMS Venturer managed to sink U-864 with a four-torpedo spread while both were submerged. The British developed a specialized anti-submarine submarine in World War I, the R-Class. After World War II, with the development of the homing torpedo, better sonar systems, and nuclear propulsion, submarines also became able to hunt each other effectively. The development of submarine-launched ballistic missile and submarine-launched cruise missiles gave submarines a substantial and long-ranged ability to attack both land and sea targets with a variety of weapons ranging from cluster bombs to nuclear weapons. The primary defense of a submarine lies in its ability to remain concealed in the depths of the ocean. Early submarines could be detected by the sound they made. Water is an excellent conductor of sound much better than air, and submarines can detect and track comparatively noisy surface ships from long distances. Modern submarines are built with an emphasis on stealth. Advanced propeller designs, extensive sound-reducing insulation, and special machinery help a submarine remain as quiet as ambient ocean noise, making them difficult to detect. It takes specialized technology to find and attack modern submarines. Active sonar uses the reflection of sound emitted from the search equipment to detect submarines. It has been used since World War II by surface ships, submarines and aircraft via dropped buoys and helicopter dipping arrays, but it reveals the emitter's position, and is susceptible to countermeasures. A concealed military submarine is a real threat, and because of its stealth, can force an enemy navy to waste resources searching large areas of ocean and protecting ships against attack. This advantage was vividly demonstrated in the 1982 Falklands War when the British nuclear-powered submarine HMS Conqueror sank the Argentine cruiser General Belgrano. After the sinking the Argentine Navy recognized that they had no effective defense against submarine attack, and the Argentine surface fleet withdrew to port for the remainder of the war, though an Argentine submarine remained at sea. Civilian. Although the majority of the world's submarines are military, there are some civilian submarines, which are used for tourism, exploration, oil and gas platform inspections, and pipeline surveys. Some are also used in illegal activities. The submarine voyage ride opened at Disneyland in 1959, but although it ran underwater it was not a true submarine, as it ran on tracks and was open to the atmosphere. The first tourist submarine was Auguste Picard, which went into service in 1964 at Expo 64. By 1997 there were 45 tourist submarines operating around the world. 
Submarines with a crush depth in the range of 400 to 500 feet (120 to 150 meters) are operated in several areas worldwide, typically with bottom depths around 100 to 120 feet (30 to 37 meters) with a carrying capacity of 50 to 100 passengers. In a typical operation, a surface vessel carries passengers to an offshore operating area and loads them into the submarine. The submarine then visits underwater points of interest such as natural or artificial reef structures. To surface safely without danger of collision the location of the submarine is marked with an air release and movement to the surface is coordinated by an observer in a support craft. A recent development is the deployment of so-called narco-submarines by South American drug smugglers to evade law enforcement detection. Although they occasionally deploy true submarines, most are self-propelled semi-submersibles, where a portion of the craft remains above water at all times. In September 2011, Colombian authorities seized a 16-meter long submersible that could hold a crew of five, costing about $2 million. The vessel belonged to Fock Rebels and had the capacity to carry at least seven tons of drugs. Civilian submarines Topic. Polar operations 1903 Simon Lake submarine protector surfaced through ice off Newport, Rhode Island. 1930 USS 012 operated under ice near Spitsbergen. 1937 Soviet submarine Krasnogvardiets operated under ice in the Denmark Strait. 1941 45 German U boats operated under ice from the Barents Sea to the Laptev Sea. 1946 USS Atul used upward beamed fathometer in Operation Nanook in the Davis Strait. 1946-47 US Senate used under ice sonar in Operation High Jump in the Antarctic. 1947 USS Boarfish used upward beamed echo sounder under pack ice in the Chukchi Sea. 1948 USS Carp developed techniques for making vertical ascents and descents through polynias in the Chukchi Sea. 1952 USS Redfish used an expanded upward beamed sounder array in the Beaufort Sea. 1957 USS Nautilus reached 87 degrees north near Spitsbergen. The 3rd of August 1958 Nautilus used an inertial navigation system to reach the North Pole. The 17th of March 1959 USS Skate surfaced through the ice at the North Pole. 1960 USS Sargo transited 900 miles 1400 kilometers under ice over the shallow 125 to 180 feet or 38 to 55 meters deep bearing Chukchi shelf 1960 USS Sea Dragon transited the northwest passage under ice 1962 Soviet November class submarine K3 Leninsky Komsomol reached the north pole 1970 USS Queenfish carried out an extensive undersea mapping survey of the Siberian continental shelf. 1971 HMS Dreadnought reached the North Pole. USS Gernard conducted three polar exercises, 1976, with U.S. actor Charlton Heston aboard, 1984 joint operations with USS Pintado, and 1990 joint exercises with USS Seahorse. 6 May 1986 USS Ray, USS Archerfish and USS Hawkbill meet and surface together at the geographic North Pole. First three submarines surfacing at the pole. 19 May 1987 HMS Superb joined USS Billfish and USS Sea Devil at the North Pole. March 2007 USS Alexandria participated in the joint US Navy Royal Navy Ice Exercise 2007 ICEX 2007 in the Arctic Ocean with the Trafalgar class submarine HMS Tireless March 2009 USS Annapolis took part in Ice Exercise 2009 to test submarine operability and war fighting capability in Arctic conditions Topic. Technology Topic. Submersion and trimming All surface ships, as well as surfaced submarines, are in a positively buoyant condition, weighing less than the volume of water they would displace if fully submerged. To submerge hydrostatically, a ship must have negative buoyancy, either by increasing its own weight or decreasing its displacement of water. 
To control their displacement, submarines have ballast tanks, which can hold varying amounts of water and air. For general submersion or surfacing, submarines use the forward and aft tanks, called main ballast tanks MBT, which are filled with water to submerge or with air to surface. Submerged, MBTs generally remain flooded, which simplifies their design, and on many submarines these tanks are a section of interhull space. For more precise and quick control of depth, submarines use smaller depth control tanks DCT, also called hard tanks due to their ability to withstand higher pressure, or trim tanks. The amount of water in depth control tanks can be controlled to change depth or to maintain a constant depth as outside conditions chiefly water density change. Depth control tanks may be located either near the submarine's center of gravity, or separated along the submarine body to prevent affecting trim. When submerged, the water pressure on a submarine's hull can reach 4 MPa for steel submarines and up to 10 MPa for titanium submarines like K278 Komsomolais, while interior pressure remains relatively unchanged. This difference results in hull compression, which decreases displacement. Water density also marginally increases with depth, as the salinity and pressure are higher. This change in density incompletely compensates for hull compression, so buoyancy decreases as depth increases. A submerged submarine is in an unstable equilibrium, having a tendency to either sink or float to the surface. Keeping a constant depth requires continual operation of either the depth control tanks or control surfaces. Submarines in a neutral buoyancy condition are not intrinsically trim stable. To maintain desired trim, submarines use forward and aft trim tanks. Pumps can move water between the tanks, changing weight distribution and pointing the sub up or down. A similar system is sometimes used to maintain stability. The hydrostatic effect of variable ballast tanks is not the only way to control the submarine underwater. Hydrodynamic maneuvering is done by several surfaces, which can be moved to create hydrodynamic forces when a submarine moves at sufficient speed. The stern planes, located near the propeller and normally horizontal, serve the same purpose as the trim tanks, controlling the trim, and are commonly used, while other control surfaces may not be present on all submarines. The fairwater planes on the sail and or bow planes on the main body, both also horizontal, are closer to the center of gravity, and are used to control depth with less effect on the trim. When a submarine performs an emergency surfacing, all depth and trim methods are used simultaneously, together with propelling the boat upwards. Such surfacing is very quick, so the sub may even partially jump out of the water, potentially damaging submarine systems. Hull Overview Modern submarines are cigar-shaped. This design, visible in early submarines, is sometimes called a teardrop hull. It reduces the hydrodynamic drag when submerged, but decreases the sea-keeping capabilities and increases drag while surfaced. Since the limitations of the propulsion systems of early submarines forced them to operate surfaced most of the time, their hull designs were a compromise. Because of the slow submerged speeds of those subs, usually well below 10 knots 18 km per hour, the increased drag for underwater travel was acceptable. Late in World War II, when technology allowed faster and longer submerged operation and increased aircraft surveillance forced submarines to stay submerged, hull designs became teardrop-shaped again to reduce drag and noise. USS Albacore AGSS 569 was a unique research submarine that pioneered the American version of the teardrop hull form sometimes referred to as an Albacore hull of modern submarines. On modern military submarines the outer hull is covered with a layer of sound absorbing rubber, or anechoic plating, to reduce detection. The occupied pressure hulls of deep diving submarines such as DSV Alvin are spherical instead of cylindrical. This allows a more even distribution of stress at the great depth. A titanium frame is usually affixed to the pressure hull, providing attachment for ballast and trim systems, scientific instrumentation, battery packs, syntactic flotation foam, and lighting. A raised tower on top of a submarine accommodates the periscope and electronics masts, which can include radio, radar, electronic warfare, and other systems including the snorkel mast. In many early classes of submarines see history, the control room, or con, 
was located inside this tower, which was known as the Conning Tower. Since then, the con has been located within the hull of the submarine, and the tower is now called the sail. The con is distinct from the bridge, a small open platform in the top of the sail, used for observation during surface operation. Bathtubs are related to conning towers but are used on smaller submarines. The bathtub is a metal cylinder surrounding the hatch that prevents waves from breaking directly into the cabin. It is needed because surfaced submarines have limited freeboard, that is, they lie low in the water. Bathtubs help prevent swamping the vessel. Topic. Single and double hulls Modern submarines and submersibles, as well as the oldest ones, usually have a single hull. Large submarines generally have an additional hull or hull sections outside. This external hull, which actually forms the shape of submarine, is called the outer hull casing in the Royal Navy or light hull, as it does not have to withstand a pressure difference. Inside the outer hull there is a strong hull, or pressure hull, which withstands sea pressure and has normal atmospheric pressure inside. As early as World War I, it was realized that the optimal shape for withstanding pressure conflicted with the optimal shape for seakeeping and minimal drag, and construction difficulties further complicated the problem. This was solved either by a compromise shape, or by using two hulls, internal for holding pressure, and external for optimal shape. Until the end of World War II, most submarines had an additional partial cover on the top, bow and stern, built of thinner metal, which was flooded when submerged. Germany went further with the Type 21, a general predecessor of modern submarines, in which the pressure hull was fully enclosed inside the light hull, but optimized for submerged navigation, unlike earlier designs that were optimized for surface operation. After World War II, approaches split. The Soviet Union changed its designs, basing them on German developments. All post-World War II heavy Soviet and Russian submarines are built with a double hull structure. American and most other Western submarines switched to a primarily single hull approach. They still have light hull sections in the bow and stern, which house main ballast tanks and provide a hydrodynamically optimized shape, but the main cylindrical hull section has only a single plating layer. Double hulls are being considered for future submarines in the United States to improve payload capacity, stealth and range. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Pressure hull. The pressure hull is generally constructed of thick high-strength steel with a complex structure and high-strength reserve and is separated with watertight bulkheads into several compartments. There are also examples of more than two hulls in a submarine, like the Typhoon class, which has two main pressure hulls and three smaller ones for control room, torpedoes and steering gear, with the missile launch system between the main hulls. The dive depth cannot be increased easily. Simply making the hull thicker increases the weight and requires reduction of onboard equipment weight, ultimately resulting in a bathyscaphe. This is acceptable for civilian research submersibles, but not military submarines. World War I submarines had hulls of carbon steel, with a 100-meter maximum depth. During World War II, high-strength alloyed steel was introduced, allowing 200-meter depths. High-strength alloy steel remains the primary material for submarines today, with 250-400-meter depths, which cannot be exceeded on a military submarine without design compromises. To exceed that limit, a few submarines were built with titanium hulls. Titanium can be stronger than steel, lighter, and is not ferromagnetic, important for stealth. Titanium submarines were built by the Soviet Union, which developed specialized high-strength alloys. It has produced several types of titanium submarines. Titanium alloys allow a major increase in depth, but other systems must be redesigned to cope, so test depth was limited to 1,000 meters 3, feet for the Soviet submarine K-278 Komsomolays, the deepest diving combat submarine. An Alpha-class submarine may have successfully operated at 1,300 meters 4, feet, though continuous operation at such depths would produce excessive stress on many submarine systems. Titanium does not flex as readily as steel, and may become brittle after many dive cycles. Despite its benefits, the high cost of titanium construction led to the abandonment of titanium submarine construction as the Cold War ended. 
Deep diving civilian submarines have used thick acrylic pressure hulls. The deepest deep submergence vehicle DSV to date is Trieste. On 5 October 1959, Trieste departed San Diego for Guam aboard the freighter Santa Maria to participate in Project Necton, a series of very deep dives in the Mariana Trench. On 23 January 1960, Trieste reached the ocean floor in the Challenger Deep the deepest southern part of the Mariana Trench, carrying Jacques Picard son of Auguste and Lt. Don Walsh, USN. This was the first time a vessel, manned or unmanned, had reached the deepest point in the Earth's oceans. The onboard systems indicated a depth of 11,521 meters (37,799 feet), although this was later revised to 10,916 meters (35,814 feet). And more accurate measurements made in 1995 have found the Challenger Deep slightly shallower at 10,911 meters (35,797 feet). Building a pressure hull is difficult, as it must withstand pressures at its required diving depth. When the hull is perfectly round in cross-section, the pressure is evenly distributed, and causes only hull compression. If the shape is not perfect, the hull is bent, with several points heavily strained. Inevitable minor deviations are resisted by stiffener rings, but even a 1-inch deviation from roundness results in over 30% decrease of maximal hydrostatic load and consequently dive depth. The hull must therefore be constructed with high precision. All hull parts must be welded without defects, and all joints are checked multiple times with different methods, contributing to the high cost of modern submarines. For example, each Virginia class attack submarine costs $2.6 billion, over $200,000 per ton of displacement. Topic: <laughs> Propulsion. The first submarines were propelled by humans. The first mechanically driven submarine was the 1863 French Plongor, which used compressed air for propulsion. Anaerobic propulsion was first employed by the Spanish Ictinio II in 1864, which used a solution of zinc, manganese dioxide, and potassium chlorate to generate sufficient heat to power a steam engine, while also providing oxygen for the crew. A similar system was not employed again until 1940 when the German Navy tested a hydrogen peroxide based system, the Walter Turbine, on the experimental V 80 submarine and later on the naval U 791 and Type 17 submarines. Until the advent of nuclear marine propulsion, most 20th century submarines used batteries for running underwater and gasoline petrol, or diesel engines on the surface, and for battery recharging. Early submarines used gasoline, but this quickly gave way to kerosene paraffin, then diesel, because of reduced flammability. Diesel electric became the standard means of propulsion. The diesel or gasoline engine and the electric motor, separated by clutches, were initially on the same shaft driving the propeller. This allowed the engine to drive the electric motor as a generator to recharge the batteries and also propel the submarine. The clutch between the motor and the engine would be disengaged when the submarine dived, so that the motor could drive the propeller. The motor could have multiple armatures on the shaft, which could be electrically coupled in series for slow speed and in parallel for high speed. These connections were called group down and group up, respectively. Topic: <laughs> Diesel electric Early submarines used a direct mechanical connection between the engine and propeller, switching between diesel engines for surface running, and battery-driven electric motors for submerged propulsion. In 1928, the United States Navy's Bureau of Engineering proposed a diesel-electric transmission. Instead of driving the propeller directly while running on the surface, the submarine's diesel drove a generator that could either charge the submarine's batteries or drive the electric motor. This made electric motor speed independent of diesel engine speed, so the diesel could run at an optimum and non-critical speed. One or more diesel engines could be shut down for maintenance while the submarine continued to run on the remaining engine or battery power. The U.S. pioneered this concept in 1929, in the S-class submarines S-3, S-6, and S-7. The first production submarines with this system were the Porpoise class of the 1930s, and it was used on most subsequent U.S. diesel submarines through the 1960s. 
No other navy adopted the system before 1945, apart from the Royal Navy's U-class submarines, though some submarines of the Imperial Japanese Navy used separate diesel generators for low-speed running. Other advantages of such an arrangement were that a submarine could travel slowly with the engines at full power to recharge the batteries quickly, reducing time on the surface or on snorkel. It was then possible to isolate the noisy diesel engines from the pressure hull, making the submarine quieter. Additionally, diesel-electric transmissions were more compact. During World War II the Germans experimented with the idea of the schnorkel snorkel from captured Dutch submarines, but didn't see the need for them until rather late in the war. The schnorkel was a retractable pipe that supplied air to the diesel engines while submerged at periscope depth, allowing the boats to cruise and recharge their batteries while maintaining a degree of stealth. It was far from a perfect solution, however. There were problems with the device's valve sticking shut or closing as it dunked in rough weather. Since the system used the entire pressure hull as a buffer, the diesels would instantaneously suck huge volumes of air from the boat's compartments, and the crew often suffered painful ear injuries. Speed was limited to 8 knots 15 km per hour, lest the device snap from stress. The schnorkel also created noise that made the boat easier to detect with sonar, yet more difficult for the onboard sonar to detect signals from other vessels. Finally, Allied radar eventually became sufficiently advanced that the schnorkel mast could be detected beyond visual range. While the snorkel renders a submarine far less detectable, it is not perfect. In clear weather, diesel exhaust can be seen on the surface to a distance of about 3 miles, while periscope feather, the wave created by the snorkel or periscope moving through the water, is visible from far off in calm sea conditions. Modern radar is also capable of detecting a snorkel in calm sea conditions. The problem of the diesels causing a vacuum in the submarine when the head valve is submerged still exists in later model diesel submarines, but is mitigated by high vacuum cutoff sensors that shut down the engines when the vacuum in the ship reaches a pre set point. Modern snorkel induction masts use a fail safe design using compressed air, controlled by a simple electrical circuit, to hold the head valve. Open against the pull of a powerful spring. Seawater washing over the mast shorts out exposed electrodes on top, breaking the control, and shutting the head valve while it is submerged. U.S. submarines did not adopt the use of snorkels until after World War II. One new technology that is being introduced starting with the Japanese Navy's 11th Soryu class submarine JS Oryu, is a more modern battery, the lithium ion battery. These batteries have about double the electric storage of traditional batteries, and by changing out the lead acid batteries in their normal storage areas plus filling up the large hull space normally devoted to AIP engine and fuel tanks with many tons of lithium-ion batteries, modern submarines can actually return to a pure diesel-electric configuration yet have the added underwater range and power normally associated with AIP-equipped submarines. Air independent During World War II, German Type 21 submarines also known as Electroboot were the first submarines designed to operate submerged for extended periods. Initially they were to carry hydrogen peroxide for long-term, fast air-independent propulsion, but were ultimately built with very large batteries instead. At the end of the war, the British and Soviets experimented with hydrogen peroxide, kerosene paraffin engines that could run surfaced and submerged. The results were not encouraging. Though the Soviet Union deployed a class of submarines with this engine type, codenamed Quebec by NATO, they were considered unsuccessful. The United States also used hydrogen peroxide in an experimental midget submarine, X-1. It was originally powered by a hydrogen peroxide, diesel engine and battery system until an explosion of her hydrogen peroxide supply on 20 May 1957. X-1 was later converted to use diesel-electric drive, today several navies use air-independent propulsion. Notably Sweden uses Stirling technology on the Gotland class and Södermanland class submarines. The Stirling engine is heated by burning diesel fuel with liquid oxygen from cryogenic tanks. A newer development in air-independent propulsion is hydrogen fuel cells, first used on the German Type 212 submarine, with 934 kW or two 120 kW cells and soon to be used in the new Spanish S-80-class submarines. Nuclear power 
Steam power was resurrected in the 1950s with a nuclear-powered steam turbine driving a generator. By eliminating the need for atmospheric oxygen, the time that a submarine could remain submerged was limited only by its food stores, as breathing air was recycled and fresh water distilled from seawater. More importantly, a nuclear submarine has unlimited range at top speed. This allows it to travel from its operating base to the combat zone in a much shorter time and makes it a far more difficult target for most anti-submarine weapons. Nuclear-powered submarines have a relatively small battery and diesel engine – generator power plant for emergency use if the reactors must be shut down. Nuclear power is now used in all large submarines, but due to the high cost and large size of nuclear reactors, smaller submarines still use diesel-electric propulsion. The ratio of larger to smaller submarines depends on strategic needs. The U.S. Navy, French Navy, and the British Royal Navy operate only nuclear submarines, which is explained by the need for distant operations. Other major operators rely on a mix of nuclear submarines for strategic purposes and diesel-electric submarines for defense. Most fleets have no nuclear submarines, due to the limited availability of nuclear power and submarine technology. Diesel-electric submarines have a stealth advantage over their nuclear counterparts. Nuclear submarines generate noise from coolant pumps and turbo machinery needed to operate the reactor, even at low power levels. Some nuclear submarines such as the American Ohio class can operate with their reactor coolant pumps secured, making them quieter than electric subs. A conventional submarine operating on batteries is almost completely silent, the only noise coming from the shaft bearings, propeller, and flow noise around the hull, all of which stops when the sub hovers in mid-water to listen, leaving only the noise from crew activity. Commercial submarines usually rely only on batteries, since they operate in conjunction with a mother ship. Several serious nuclear and radiation accidents have involved nuclear submarine mishaps. The Soviet submarine K-19 reactor accident in 1961 resulted in eight deaths and more than 30 other people were overexposed to radiation. The Soviet submarine K-27 reactor accident in 1968 resulted in nine fatalities and 83 other injuries. The Soviet submarine K-431 accident in 1985 resulted in 10 fatalities and 49 other radiation injuries. Topic. Alternative Oil-fired steam turbines powered the British K-class submarines, built during World War I and later, to give them the surface speed to keep up with the battle fleet. The K-class subs were not very successful, however. Toward the end of the 20th century, some submarines—such as the British Vanguard class—began to be fitted with pump jet propulsors instead of propellers. Though these are heavier, more expensive, and less efficient than a propeller, they are significantly quieter, providing an important tactical advantage. Magnetohydrodynamic drive MHD was portrayed as the operating principle behind the titular submarine's nearly silent propulsion system in the film adaptation of The Hunt for Red October. However, in the novel The Red October did not use MHD, but rather something more similar to the above-mentioned pump jet. Topic. Armament The success of the submarine is inextricably linked to the development of the torpedo, invented by Robert Whitehead in 1866. His invention is essentially the same now as it was 140 years ago. Only with self-propelled torpedoes could the submarine make the leap from novelty to a weapon of war. Until the perfection of the guided torpedo, multiple, straight running, Torpedoes were required to attack a target. With at most 20 to 25 torpedoes stored on board, the number of attacks was limited. To increase combat endurance most World War I submarines functioned as submersible gunboats, using their deck guns against unarmed targets, and diving to escape and engage enemy warships. The importance of guns encouraged the development of the unsuccessful submarine cruisers such as the French Surkoff and the Royal Navy's X-1 and M-class submarines. With the arrival of anti-submarine warfare ASW aircraft, guns became more for defense than attack. A more practical method of increasing combat endurance was the external torpedo tube, loaded only in port. The ability of submarines to approach enemy harbors covertly led to their use as minelayers. Minelaying submarines of World War I and World War II were specially built for that purpose. 
Modern submarine laid mines, such as the British Mark V Stonefish and Mark VI Sea Urchin, can be deployed from a submarine's torpedo tubes. After World War II, both the U.S. and the USSR experimented with submarine-launched cruise missiles such as the SSMN-8 Regulus and P-5 Pyotyorka. Such missiles required the submarine to surface to fire its missiles. They were the forerunners of modern submarine-launched cruise missiles, which can be fired from the torpedo tubes of submerged submarines, for example the US BGM-109 Tomahawk and Russian RPK-2 Vyuga and versions of surface-to-surface anti-ship missiles such as the Exocet and Harpoon, encapsulated for submarine launch. Ballistic missiles can also be fired from a submarine's torpedo tubes, for example missiles such as the anti-submarine SUBROC. With internal volume as limited as ever and the desire to carry heavier warloads, the idea of the external launch tube was revived, usually for encapsulated missiles, with such tubes being placed between the internal pressure and outer streamlined hulls. The strategic mission of the SSMN-8 and the P-5 was taken up by submarine-launched ballistic missile beginning with the U.S. Navy's Polaris missile, and subsequently the Poseidon and Trident missiles. Germany is working on the torpedo tube-launched short-range IDAS missile, which can be used against ASW helicopters, as well as surface ships and coastal targets. Sensors A submarine can have a variety of sensors, depending on its missions. Modern military submarines rely almost entirely on a suite of passive and active sonars to locate targets. Active sonar relies on an audible ping to generate echoes to reveal objects around the submarine. Active systems are rarely used, as doing so reveals the sub's presence. Passive sonar is a set of sensitive hydrophones set into the hull or trailed in a towed array, normally trailing several hundred feet behind the sub. The towed array is the mainstay of NATO submarine detection systems, as it reduces the flow noise heard by operators. Hull-mounted sonar is employed in addition to the towed array, as the towed array can't work in shallow depth and during maneuvering. In addition, sonar has a blind spot through the submarine, so a system on both the front and back works to eliminate that problem. As the towed array trails behind and below the submarine, it also allows the submarine to have a system both above and below the thermocline at the proper depth. Sound passing through the thermocline is distorted resulting in a lower detection range. Submarines also carry radar equipment to detect surface ships and aircraft. Submarine captains are more likely to use radar detection gear than active radar to detect targets, as radar can be detected far beyond its own return range, revealing the submarine. Periscopes are rarely used, except for position fixes and to verify a contact's identity. Civilian submarines, such as the DSV Alvin or the Russian Mir submersibles, rely on small active sonar sets and viewing ports to navigate. The human eye cannot detect sunlight below about 300 feet 91 meters underwater, so high-intensity lights are used to illuminate the viewing area. <laughs> Navigation Early submarines had few navigation aids, but modern subs have a variety of navigation systems. Modern military submarines use an inertial guidance system for navigation while submerged, but drift error unavoidably builds over time. To counter this, the crew occasionally uses the global positioning system to obtain an accurate position. The periscope—a retractable tube with a prism system that provides a view of the surface—is only used occasionally in modern submarines, since the visibility range is short. The Virginia class and Astute class submarines use photonics masts rather than hull penetrating optical periscopes. These masts must still be deployed above the surface, and use electronic sensors for visible light, infrared, laser range finding, and electromagnetic surveillance. One benefit to hoisting the mast above the surface is that while the mast is above the water, the entire sub is still below the water and is much harder to detect visually or by radar. Communication Military submarines use several systems to communicate with distant command centers or other ships. One is VLF very low frequency radio, which can reach a submarine either on the surface or submerged to a fairly shallow depth, usually less than 250 feet 76 meters. 
Elf extremely low frequency can reach a submarine at greater depths, but has a very low bandwidth and is generally used to call a submerged sub to a shallower depth where VLF signals can reach. A submarine also has the option of floating a long, buoyant wire antenna to a shallower depth, allowing VLF transmissions by a deeply submerged boat. By extending a radio mast, a submarine can also use a burst transmission technique. A burst transmission takes only a fraction of a second, minimizing a submarine's risk of detection. To communicate with other submarines, a system known as Gertrude is used. Gertrude is basically a sonar telephone. Voice communication from one submarine is transmitted by low-power speakers into the water, where it is detected by passive sonars on the receiving submarine. The range of this system is probably very short, and using it radiates sound into the water, which can be heard by the enemy. Civilian submarines can use similar, albeit less powerful systems to communicate with support ships or other submersibles in the area. Life support systems With nuclear power or air-independent propulsion, submarines can remain submerged for months at a time. Conventional diesel submarines must periodically resurface or run on snorkel to recharge their batteries. Most modern military submarines generate breathing oxygen by electrolysis of water using a device called an electrolytic oxygen generator. Atmosphere control equipment includes a CO2 scrubber, which uses an amine absorbent to remove the gas from air and diffuse it into waste pumped overboard. A machine that uses a catalyst to convert carbon monoxide into carbon dioxide removed by the CO2 scrubber and bonds hydrogen produced from the ship's storage battery with oxygen in the atmosphere to produce water, is also used. An atmosphere monitoring system samples the air from different areas of the ship for nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, R12 and R114 refrigerants, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and other gases. Poisonous gases are removed, and oxygen is replenished by use of an oxygen bank located in a main ballast tank. Some heavier submarines have two oxygen bleed stations forward and aft. The oxygen in the air is sometimes kept a few percent less than atmospheric concentration to reduce fire danger. Fresh water is produced by either an evaporator or a reverse osmosis unit. The primary use for fresh water is to provide feedwater for the reactor and steam propulsion plants. It is also available for showers, sinks, cooking and cleaning once propulsion plant needs have been met. Seawater is used to flush toilets, and the resulting black water is stored in a sanitary tank until it is blown overboard using pressurized air or pumped overboard by using a special sanitary pump. The Blackwater discharge system is difficult to operate, and the German type VIIC boat U1206 was lost with casualties because of human error while using this system. Water from showers and sinks is stored separately in grey water tanks and discharged overboard using drain pumps. Trash on modern large submarines is usually disposed of using a tube called a trash disposal unit TDU, where it is compacted into a galvanized steel can. At the bottom of the TDU is a large ball valve. An ice plug is set on top of the ball valve to protect it, the cans atop the ice plug. The top breech door is shut, and the TDU is flooded and equalized with sea pressure, the ball valve is opened and the cans fall out assisted by scrap iron weights in the cans. The TDU is also flushed with seawater to ensure it is completely empty and the ball valve is clear before closing the valve. Crew A typical nuclear submarine has a crew of over 80, conventional boats typically have fewer than 40. The conditions on a submarine can be difficult because crew members must work in isolation for long periods of time, without family contact. Submarines normally maintain radio silence to avoid detection. Operating a submarine is dangerous, even in peacetime, and many submarines have been lost in accidents. Women <inaudible> <inaudible> Most navies prohibited women from serving on submarines, even after they had been permitted to serve on surface warships. The Royal Norwegian Navy became the first navy to allow women on its submarine crews in 1985. The Royal Danish Navy allowed female submariners in 1988. 
Others followed suit including the Swedish Navy 1989, the Royal Australian Navy 1998, the Spanish Navy 1999, the German Navy 2001, and the Canadian Navy 2002. In 1995, Solveig Cray of the Royal Norwegian Navy became the first female officer to assume command on a military submarine, H. Noms Cobbin. On 8 December 2011, British Defence Secretary Philip Hammond announced that the UK's ban on women in submarines was to be lifted from 2013. Previously, there were fears that women were more at risk from a buildup of carbon dioxide in the submarine. But a study showed no medical reason to exclude women, though pregnant women would still be excluded. Similar dangers to the pregnant woman and her fetus barred women from submarine service in Sweden in 1983, when all other positions were made available for them in the Swedish Navy. Today, pregnant women are still not allowed to serve on submarines in Sweden. However, the policymakers thought that it was discriminatory with a general ban and demanded that women should be tried on their individual merits and have their suitability evaluated and compared to other candidates. Further, they noted that a woman complying with such high demands is unlikely to become pregnant. In May 2014, three women became the RN's first female submariners. Women have served on U.S. Navy surface ships since 1993, and as of 2011 2012, began serving on submarines for the first time. Until presently, the Navy allowed only three exceptions to women being on board military submarines, female civilian technicians for a few days at most, women midshipmen on an overnight during summer training for Navy ROTC and Naval Academy, and family members for one-day dependent cruises. In 2009, senior officials, including then Secretary of the Navy Ray Mabus, Joint Chief of Staff Admiral Michael Mullen, and Chief of Naval Operations Admiral Gary Rawhead, began the process of finding a way to implement women on submarines. The U.S. Navy rescinded its no women on subs policy in 2010. Both the U.S. and British navies operate nuclear powered submarines that deploy for periods of six months or longer. Other navies that permit women to serve on submarines operate conventionally powered submarines, which deploy for much shorter periods—usually only for a few months. Prior to the change by the U.S., no nation using nuclear submarines permitted women to serve on board. In 2011, the first class of female submarine officers graduated from Naval Submarine School's Submarine Officer Basic Course at the Naval Submarine Base New London. Additionally, more senior ranking and experienced female supply officers from the surface warfare specialty attended SOBC as well, proceeding to Fleet Ballistic Missile and Guided Missile submarines along with the new female submarine line officers beginning in late 2011. By late 2011, several women were assigned to the Ohio-class ballistic missile submarine USS Wyoming. On 15 October 2013, the U.S. Navy announced that two of the smaller Virginia-class attack submarines, USS Virginia and USS Minnesota, would have female crew members by January 2015. <laughs> <laughs> Abandoning the vessel In an emergency, submarines can transmit a signal to other ships. The crew can use submarine escape immersion equipment to abandon the submarine. The crew can prevent a lung injury from the pressure change known as pulmonary barotrauma by exhaling during the ascent. Following escape from a pressurized submarine, the crew is at risk of developing decompression sickness. An alternative escape means is via a deep submergence rescue vehicle that can dock onto the disabled submarine. See also Topic <inaudible> by country List of submarine operators Australia Collins class submarine Bangladesh type 035G submarine Britain list of submarines of the Royal Navy list of submarine classes of the Royal Navy China – Submarines of the People's Liberation Army Navy France – Submarines in the French Navy, List of Submarines of the French Navy, List of French Submarine Classes and Types Germany – List of U-Boats of Germany India – Submarines of the Indian Navy Israel – Dolphin Class Submarine Japan – Imperial Japanese Navy Submarines, List of Combatant Ship Classes of the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force Hashtag SS, Submarine 
The Netherlands – List of submarines of the Netherlands Pakistan – List of active Pakistan Navy ships Hashtag submarines Romania – Romanian submarines of World War II Russia – List of Soviet and Russian submarine classes Soviet Union – List of ships of the Soviet Navy Hashtag submarines Spain – List of submarines in the Spanish Navy Turkey – List of submarines of the Turkish Navy United States – Submarines in the U.S. Navy – List of submarines of the U.S. Navy – List of U.S. submarine classes – Naval Submarine Medical Research Laboratory <laughs>